Happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and you're going to be oh so inspired today. You're going to be blessed. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move. This is a hard-working lady. She's pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is this week. Food vendors usually position themselves at vantage points to sell with some carrying on their heads in order to expand their customer base. Some carry the food from house to house to sell. Fast forward into today's highly technological world, a lot is changing. Most entrepreneurs are gradually venturing into the food staff and food markets using social media as a tool to market their services. Millicent, a graduate of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, after taking a course in branding products and services, decided to take a mother's tabletop foodstuff market to a higher level. This, she said, was to help promote her mother's business, which was basically focused on serving work-in customers. I sat and realized, okay, my mom sells at the market where we are now. What if there is a form of delivery service attached to it so that it will make life easy for um, clients who usually walk in to buy? So people will order and then we package and deliver to them nicely. After all, we are all busy. She receives orders from people each day requesting for a variety of foodstuffs at each point in time. Usually service charge um, depends on the um, quantity of items you're ordering for, the quantity, um, the location where you find yourself, and then also the immediateness of how you want it. So we look at all this before we give you the charge. According to her, online marketing has been very good as sales have shot up to about 50%. If you were catering for only working clients and you are making 100 cities a day, and then you decide to deliver to people who are home, plus those who walk in, I'm sure the number will change in business. Interestingly, Millicent's colleagues in the markets are not throwing roses at her, as they feel threatened owing to the number of customers she receives. She's not the only person taking advantage. Mamia Friye, also a graduate of GIJ, quit her job as a marketing advisor in the firm to start her food business. Before I even went to learn how to make cakes, it was just because I wanted to do it for the house. I didn't really plan to sell my cakes. But then a friend tried my cake, and the next birthday, she asked me the price of my cake. Initially, I was not even selling them. I was just giving out to friends to just take them and let me know their feedback before I even marketed my whole product. But then by the time, they were all saying it was good. So I should just price them. Mamiya loves cooking on a daily basis and prepares various dishes for her clients and charges based on a kilo of food she prepares. Regrets has never been part of her food journey story and hopes to start a restaurant soon. When you are doing certain things, you feel like you're not really into this per se. So you just want to do what you, feel, you really feel like doing. And that was what I felt back then. And compared to what I was feeling now and then today, I feel yeah, I, I made a very, very good decision by leaving. Clearly, it appears the online food business has not only made the lives of the working class easy, but has also created jobs for many. For the millions of Ghanaians who love to sell foodstuffs but are unable to sit under an umbrella in the markets, social media is fast becoming an option. Need I say more? Ajoa Adubia Ogusu, TV3.
Our winning woman for today is Apostle Mrs. Leanne Kofi. This is a woman who has had a great impact on my life. I would share a bit maybe during the interview. And it's such a blessing to have her on. Her story is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Apostle Leanne, you are so, so welcome. I'm so glad to have you on. I know how busy you are, and so I had to pull you <laughs> to come on, and I'm so glad to have you on today. Thank you very much. You're me. welcome. I'm also honored to be on today, woman. Oh, you're yeah, so, so, so yeah. welcome. I mean, like I said, your story is mind-blowing, because like the many things that you've been through, mm -hmm. I mean, you are a living testimony that God is real, mm -hmm. and that he really does work. Yes. As we are talking, maybe you'll be able to tell us some of the challenges, life challenges that you've been through, health challenges mm -hmm. that you've been through but you are seated here today basking yes. in glory and in Amen. beauty <laughs> I have to say so you're very welcome Thank you. and you know now so many um, people I mean when you say a pastor mm -hmm. I mean when I invite people to my church yeah. and they're, they're expecting to see a man that's right so first of all how is that you know being a very strong and powerful woman in this you know having your ministry how mm -hmm. is it being a woman and being a pastor you know, because people expect mm. to come and see a man. That's right. Mm. Well, basically, you know, the call of God um, does not have um, a set gender for definition. Right. You know, the calling of God is of the spirit, not of the physical. So, indeed, God calls men and women. Mm -hmm. God can even use children. Right. But, of course, in our world, we have seen a more male-dominated um, kind of ministry environment. Mm. But nevertheless, being a woman in ministry, I can say I've never you know, felt within myself, which I believe is the most important thing, mm -hmm. I've never felt any sense of um, less self-worth right. or inability. Right. Yes, because the Lord gives me that strength. Mm -hmm. yes. So you've never been intimidated? Well, people try. Mm. You, you, you will go through some intimidation as a woman. Mm. But then, of course, as I said, you, you, if you don't seek affirmation from other people, right. but you seek affirmation from God, then you're all right. It. I'm so glad you mentioned self-worth because that's one thing that I want us to talk about, right. you know, as a woman, knowing what mm. your value is, that's knowing right. what your self-worth is mm. and everything. Um, but, you know, I, uh, and, and saying as well that it's difficult, and I, and I think it's difficult in every industry. Right. I've spoken to so many powerful women mm. on the Today's Woman show, and a lot of them have said in different industries right. how they've been intimidated mm. by men, mm -hmm. how sometimes they walk into a conference or into a meeting and people are expecting to see a man. And how come you are the CEO right. and, and you're a woman? Mm -hmm. Now, you have a degree right. in sociology and psychology from the University of Ghana. That's right. So were you, like, expecting? What, what, growing up, what were, your, what were you expecting to be? Did you think that, you know, you'd probably be a doctor, a psychologist? Yes. You know, so did it come as a shock to you? Well, growing up, I think the first thing I wanted to be was a caterer. Oh. Because I love to cook. <laughs> but... My mom said, no, no, you can't be a cage, right? Because most people cook and they can't eat it. I would cook and I would eat it. <laughs> so she said, no. Then after that, I had within me the desire to become a lawyer. Mm. But when I was in, I think, the third year of, um, that's the final year in Legon, I, that's when I, I heard the call of God. Mm. And I knew from that time that my eventual Thing would be ministry. Wow. Well, I know you and I know that the, the many different struggles that you've been through, mm. different health challenges yes. and all. I know like when you're in university, that's when you had your first attack, which was it was a cancer. Yes. I had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, okay. um, which had very poor prognosis, mm. but God healed me. Wow, that's the cancer of the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And after that, I was diagnosed also with um, a kidney problem. Mm -hmm. And then later on, it turned out that it was as a result of lupus. Oh. So I was diagnosed with lupus and on and on and on, you know, over years, the, the lupus, you know, the medication of the lupus, which is the steroids, damaged my hip bones. Yes. So I had to have a double hip replacement surgery. And then after that, the kidney went bad again. And so last year, that's... Um, 2nd September, to be exact, 2018, I had a kidney transplant. 
and you are sitting here. Yeah. I mean, like, if yeah. I, God is just amazing yes. because if you hadn't said all of this, mm -hmm. you know, nobody, nobody would even tell. Nobody no. can yeah. even imagine. That's I remember I mean. you saying in one of your testimonies mm -hmm. that when you had your first cancer, mm -hmm. that was when I think you had just gotten married. Yes. The doctor said to you that you couldn't I have, have a, a child. you couldn't have children. You have five children today. That's right. mm -hmm. You know, I mean, glory to God. It's so yeah. so amazing. But yeah. going through all these struggles, mm -hmm. did it ever, you know, change? Did you ever think that God is God is not real, or maybe God? Did you ever think that God has a abandoned you? No, on the contrary, everything I've been through has rather strengthened my faith in God because mm. I realized that God is, mm. you know, and I decided to hold on tenaciously right. to him right. and he would always come through. Right. right. Now, um, I, I saw pictures of um, when you had lupus That's and right. you had lost all your hair That's right. um, because at the beginning we were talking about the self-worth of a woman, That's the right. value of a woman. Mm -hmm. And now in today's world, mm -hmm. you know, we all place beauty mm -hmm. on like the outer, mm -hmm. our hair, mm -hmm. our nails, you know, That's on right. the material things, on mm. the things that can mm. be bought and all mm. of that. Going through that, did it affect your self-worth, your self-value? No, actually, it never did because, you know, every woman needs to understand that you are created beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, women come in different shapes, colors, and sizes. Right. But altogether, every woman carries her own kind of beauty. Yes. And as you said, it's not just on the outward, but the inner person, the inner spirit, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, because women are very emotional creatures, we tend to look at other women and try to compare. Right. So sometimes when you go into comparing yourself with others, then you will feel less maybe. Mm. But for me, I didn't feel that. I believe primarily because my husband is mm. Kirk. He always affirmed me even at my lowest. And sometimes I'll look in the mirror and I'll, I'll say, no, this is, this is terrible. Wow. Because you know, I had pock marks all over my skin. You know, I really look terrible. But he would just continue to say, you look beautiful. We have, we have to toast to Engineer Kofi. That's this, right. is a t this is a toast to you. That's right. This is a toast Great to man. you. <laughs> Great man indeed. Thank mm. you. Mm -hmm. I was also brought up by another great man, my father, Colonel C.S.C. Grant, and he was a soldier. So he taught me you know, to have an inner strength within myself, mm. right, rather than to look to other people yeah. or to look yeah. outside. So I never felt bad, mm. you know. I just, well, I was more concerned about getting healed and getting right. well, you know what right. I'm saying. Now, yeah. when they told you that you couldn't have children, did mm. that bother you? I didn't believe what the doctor said to you me. You didn't believe it. No, I, I, if I, I, did, I didn't take you it chose in. chose not to I believe it. I chose not to believe it because before then, I had prayed and I'd heard, you know, from God that I would have children. So when he said that, I said, thank you very much, doctor, but I know that God so is going to give So within you, you didn't believe it? No, I never took it in. Wow. And exactly a month after I finished my chemotherapy, because I went through chemotherapy, you know, at Kolibu, and... Um, a month after chemo, which is after six months of treatment, a month after that, I was pregnant with my first son. Oh my goodness. Amen. Oh my goodness, that is yeah. amazing. Which was, which was, the doctor couldn't believe. He said, no, Leanne, this is not possible. And even if you are, the child will be malformed. So at that time, we, my husband went to Canada and I joined him and we went to, you know, big cancer research hospitals in Ottawa. And there was nothing, you know, physically through the scan you know, wrong with the child. But they said, well, we we'll know not about his mental faculty until he's born. Mm -hmm. And he's now 30 years old. Uh, he's an engineer, doing very well. I mean, I, I, I almost want to get up and dance ah. there. <laughs> I mean, yes. that is just so, so amazing. Mm -hmm. I love stories like this because it's real. That's right. You know, you hear, sometimes you, the stories you hear are too far. That's right. So sometimes you doubt it. That's but right. when somebody close to you or somebody that you are watching now is actually mm -hmm. telling you, mm -hmm. and this is a living testimony. Mm -hmm. Now, I love that in your, in your sermons mm -hmm. and, you know, you encourage women a lot. That's you right. always uplift women. You always talk mm -hmm. about the worth of, the, of a woman. Right. You know, what do you think? I want to know what you think um, is the influence. What, what do you, what would you say is the influence of a woman? Amazing. You know, right from, um, well, I'm a pastor, so I speak from the biblical perspective. Right. right from creation, you realize that God's own submission on the need for a woman was that it's not good for the man to be alone. Right. He said, I'll make him a sufficient helper. Mm -hmm. So right from there, you realize that the, the woman is created and wired with something 
that is able to make things better. Mm -hmm. You know, Adam was not completing himself. He, he was given this woman as a help me, mm. a sufficient helper. Mm. So I think that, you know, women are amazing creatures mm -hmm. and we have great influence. A woman has influence over her husband, mm -hmm. her father, mm -hmm. her brother, her son. Yeah, so over all so men. Over, over all the men around you, mm -hmm. you have influence because they, they have a soft spot for you. But it's up to you, the woman, to use that influence Right. That's what I want and for you the to, right yes. purpose. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, women are very influential. And, you know, women, by our nature, are nurturers. We are carers. Mm -hmm. We are helpers. And so the, 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 there's a great, you know, well, let me see. So, so the, there's a great task mm -hmm. set upon every woman, mm -hmm. you know, and women carry great destinies. Right. We are destiny carriers. Mm -hmm. you, you, you take the seed, you bring forth a child. Right. Most women... Right have been given the opportunity, and it is an opportunity mm -hmm. because not everybody will have a child, yeah. but that should not make you feel less of a woman right. because you can nurture a child that is not biologically that is your, yours. Yes, yes, you know, yes. huh? But we have that inner you know, love and emotional strength mm -hmm. to nurture. Mm -hmm. you know, so women are very influential. And sometimes I say that the many things that men do it's not primarily because they want it for themselves, but they are doing it to impress their women. The <laughs> So we like, have the, like cars. Uh, you Men know, love cars, not the, because they really like cars, but they say sometimes, but because women see a man in a flashy car, no, oh, he's a nice guy. So it's like they're they are driving past that, it, like they're right. like, look at me, Looking, look at yes, me, look yes. at me. So the men yes, watching, yes. huh? Yes. Why did you buy your car? <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing is that we must use our influence positively. positively. You know, we are world changers. Mm. Uh -huh. we, we can change so many things. Like in the word of God, there were four daughters of a man who died. And in that time in Israel, there was the, the law of inheritance was that women couldn't inherit mm. if their father died. But mm -hmm. these girls did not have a brother and they were going to lose their father's inheritance. And they stood up and said, no, mm. we want to have our father's inheritance. And because of their boldness, mm -hmm. because of their tenacity, mm -hmm. you know, because of their influence, the whole law was changed from that well, time. Yeah, because that from that time, women can inherit. Wow. Yes. Wow. And you know, in the 1920s in America, for example, women were not allowed to vote. True. But the women's suffrage, you know, that rose up in that time, the movement, you know, brought about you know, the new legislation, women can mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. So women are very influential, yes, very yes, powerful. Yes. And they are, I love that you said that, very powerful, because mm. on this show alone, I've met so many powerful women right. who have risen to positions right. that they probably would not have been in many years ago. Never. But now women are breaking ceilings yes. all over and all of that. Mm -hmm. So women are becoming very, very, very powerful, right. very confident, very courageous. Right. Um, but where does that line in when it comes to submission? Because that also is really important that right. the woman's role, mm -hmm. you know, what is the woman's role, you know, in, in, in a home, for example, okay. no I'll, matter I'll, what her level yeah. in life is. Yeah, I'll call that the woman's position. Position, okay. But as for your role, is the things that you do as okay. a woman in the house. Right. But then your position, mm -hmm. you know, biblically is that the man is ahead and the woman um, submits to the man. Right. Now, the word submission means to yield. Mm -hmm. It is not um, to be maybe a doormat, right. as okay. some people think, okay. that you can't talk when I talk. No, it is a yielding. Mm. And really, that scripture begins from the verse 21 of Ephesians 5, that yield yourself one to the other, that's mm. husband and wife. Okay. Then he says, wives, submit. submit. Mm. So there's the need for both men and women to yield to one to another, to, to understand one another. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the crunch, because a man is ahead, you, the woman, will have to yield to to his okay. idea or suggestion or whatever, you know, respectfully. Right. Huh. So um, submission is to yield to mm. your husband. Right. Oh, yes. Right. So it doesn't mean that, because some, some women think that to be submissive, mm. or men think that for their wives to be submissive, mm. that means that they can probably disrespect them. No, no, no. Or treat them anyway, no. you know, because they are the man or, yes, you know, but yes. this is something that has to be taught properly. That's and, right. and for women to, to understand that yes. no matter... How, your position. How, yes, no. how high you rise. Yes. Because it's, it, it's, you know, there's been a statistic that is getting many marriages in a way are breaking up when the woman is even rising up. That's right. You know, in the corporate world. That's right. You know, so the position, you know, 
for a woman and for a mother and for a wife. Must be you know, defined yes, properly. Must be you, know, well defined. you, the woman, have to have an understanding. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, for example, I consider myself a wife first, mm -hmm. a mother second, and a pastor third. Wow. So my work or in, or any woman's career should not take first place to her covenant vow to her husband mm -hmm. and then to the family that God has given you. Because if you have a husband, you have a home, and you neglect him in the name of work, career, right. or ministry, what will happen is that because you got you know, your positions wrong, you know, your priorities wrong, there will be chaos. Mm. There will not be fulfillment in the home. Right. So women have to get their priorities right. And when a woman rises to a high position like a CEO or anything in any job or a business, become even richer than your husband, mm -hmm. it is not um, a ticket to disrespect him. Right. You understand? Right. Uh -huh. In fact, the more God blesses you or the more successful you are, the more you must yield to your husband mm. to honor him and yes. to respect him. Yeah. And then he will also affirm you. The reason why a lot of men want to sort of clamp their women down is because some women rise up in pride. Mm. But in humility and love, your husband or your man will not feel intimidated. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's also to, so we so we talk about this a lot, and we say how some men are not strong enough. They don't like powerful women, but no. sometimes it's probably maybe the way you, the woman, you know, the you, mm. the woman, you know, sort of rise up That's and right. sort of how you know you carry yourself and behave in, the, in, behave in that and, power in and, quote and, and talk. And talk, okay. Yes, so that, that's a great lesson, ladies. We are watching and we are learning. Right. That's fantastic. Now, please tell us a bit about Sisters Keepers. That's right. I know you've, you have a, a group, mm -hmm. Sisters Keepers, mm -hmm. and if you could please tell us a bit about it. Right. And what's the main purpose of it? Okay. Um, Sisters Keepers is a vision God gave me in, I think, the year 2007. Mm -hmm. And he said to me that every woman can be her Sisters Keeper. Mm. You know, in relating it to how God asks Cain, where's your brother Abel? Am, am I my brother's keeper? I'm not his keeper. Mm. You know, he was saying that I don't care about him. He's not my business. Mm. But that I believe that no man can empathize with what a woman goes through. It takes a woman to understand a woman. Yes. It takes a woman to empathize when a sister is saying, I'm going through this or that because we She's are the same more or less. through it as well. That's and right. Can understand and it. can understand and feel it. And so we have to be one another's keeper. Mm. We have to be there for one another. I sometimes think that between the time a woman you know, has a problem and she maybe ends up a screen tell home, who was there for her and who wasn't there for her? The sisterhood, you know, the, the friendship and sisterhood of other women sometimes can support you through hard times, mm. you know? Yes. So that's the, 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 the basis of the, mm. of the vision. Mm. And also um, the plan for it is for mentorship that okay. every woman should have other women you mentor. Mm. When we talk about mentorship, people always think about the old one and the young one, but it can be old and younger or even your age mates, mm. depending on what you have to offer, right. according to the wisdom that mm -hmm. God has given mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. and also the ability. For example, in these days, we see that many of our young girls are into very high immoral life. Sometimes not because they want to, but because they have certain needs that they cannot find a way mm. to, you know, to provide for, for yeah. themselves. Mm. But some women also have the ability to take one or two young girls and be a blessing to them mm. financially, yes. help them through school, help them through uni, yes. you know, supply their needs. Because some women can afford it, mm. you know. And if we do this over a period of about 20 years, we will see that women coming up mm. will, will, be, will be right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's the Sisters Keepers' vision. Yeah, number one, fantastic. to be there for one another. Yeah. Number two, to mentor mm. and to help. Mm. You know, other women. Now, one thing that I love that you do every year is an mm. annual conference, the That's Broken right. But Healed Conference. Right. I've been to, you know, all of them. That's right. You know, and um, I love the, first of all, I love the title, mm -hmm. you know, Broken By, because many women mm. sometimes are so, so, so broken. Right. You know, I, I have been a makeup artist for many years. Yes. I'm into the beauty and fashion industry. Mm -hmm. And when I was running that business, mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. that so many women will come into it. That's what actually led me to 
what I do now, which okay. is coaching. Yes. So many women will come into my shop, mm. so beautiful mm. on the outside, outside and everything, right. glorious, you yeah, know, walk in, inside. but broken right. inside, mm -hmm. totally broken, mm -hmm. and hiding it all with, you know, the hair and the makeup, makeup and right. then the clothes mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But they're so, so crushed and broken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because they, who can they even trust to go and tell their story mm -hmm. to? That's number one. Yeah. Um, sometimes as well, some women as well feel like, you know, if I come and tell you my story, it will be an opportunity for you to probably have, you know, to laugh at me mm -hmm. or to, because it's, it's happened, it happened, you yeah. know. So sometimes that as well can be a problem for mm -hmm. people, for women not knowing who to tell their story to, right. who they can trust, mm -hmm. who can I really go and talk to, who yeah. can help me through this. That's I right. will not use it against yeah. me yeah. later. So mm -hmm. that's why I really like this, mm -hmm. this conference. And I know yeah. it's coming up soon. We'll talk yeah. about it. Yes. But what made you choose that name? Broken But Healed. Yes. Initially, you know, it was just... The Lost Garden Ministries Annual Women Convention. Mm -hmm. And so one year when God gave me that theme, Broken But Healed. And the whole basis of it is that there are many women who have been through so many things. Mm -hmm. And by reason of their experiences in life, um, have become, you know, um, a certain way. Do certain things. But God's plan is that there should be restoration. Mm -hmm. And so he's a mender. He's a healer. Mm -hmm. He's a fixer. Mm -hmm. He puts things back, back together. together well. And so anything that is broken, especially where the human spirit soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, the plan of God is to bring total restoration. Mm -hmm. And so the conferences have been geared at bringing total restoration, bringing the totality of the will of God for women mm -hmm. into play. So that after people have come to the women have come to the conference, they go up with head lifted up. I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. Today's woman should be there for the next today's woman. That's right. Each and every one of us mm -hmm. is today's woman. That's right. To be that, you know, you have to be the same for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. I mean, we've learned so much today. And I love that this 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 conference, you mm -hmm. know, there are so many things that are taught in the conference. That's I right. always encourage, if you follow me on social media at Rene QGH, I always encourage self-development. Mm -hmm. And I always say that just because you finish your degree or you finish your master's or anything doesn't mean that education has ended no, education no, no, no. is education daily, never you know all the time you're learning yeah. and you need to also develop yourself so ladies out there i want you to listen out for different kinds of conferences mm -hmm. and all that to so go to to go and learn and uplift yourself because there's there's so many things in the world that is crushing women mm -hmm. so many things daily that is crushing women so you need to hear things like this and decide for yourself that i really need to go and empower myself and this is a great kind of empowerment mm -hmm. that you go and get that your head will be lifted up mm -hmm. and everything around you will change mm -hmm. and this an apostle bless you so much god bless, bless you, you for obedience you, you know first of all for hearing it and not you know having because a lot of people as well hear things that's right and then think oh number one is it truly the word of is it truly from god, god yeah. or oh nobody has done it yet that's why right. should i do it yeah. what if sometimes I fail? too we know when we feel that we can't do it, mm -hmm. you know? You can't do it. Please speak to the women. This you have to, I, I have to, <laughs> I, sorry to interrupt, but I really want you to speak to women out there. There are okay. so many women, Apostle, who really think that they admire many women. Yes. And they, they, I think they are just admirers. That's right. But they are one of those women that somebody else can admire. That's right. So if you can please speak to such a woman who is probably watching and thinking when. Okay. I just want to speak into your life, dear sister, that you have been created with different giftings and abilities. You, you have something in you that nobody else has, and you can do things that maybe nobody else can do. You are specially designed. You carry great, a great destiny, and you are a carrier of the destinies of many. Mm. The only thing that can stop you is yourself. Mm. So don't allow the self, that is your mind, to speak or dictate to you, but rather, believe in whatever you have. We will not all be CEOs, we will not all be pastors, we will not all be doctors and lawyers, but there's something that you can do. And so whatever you can do, take it and run with it, mm. having faith in it that it can be done. Somebody did it before, you can also do it. So be encouraged and be strengthened and move forward. Amen. I told you you're going to be blessed today. Today, I mean, I, I already feel like I can go and climb a mountain. And I'm going to do just that. We'll be right back. <laughs> A 
Okay, so we are right back from that mountain climbing, and it was easy. <laughs> you can do it too. Now, this is a, I, I always do this, Apostle. Mm -hmm. I always ask, you know, some of the women who come here, their mm -hmm. definitions, you know, different things. What's mm -hmm. your definition of a today's woman? Mm -hmm. What's your, now, I, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. Now, I see beauty when I look at you. I tell you all the Thank time. You. you know, going through everything that you've been to, you always have a smile on your face. Now, I want you to tell us what you think. What is your definition of a beautiful woman? My definition of a beautiful woman is a woman who is confident in herself and her looks okay you know beauty is not only outward i believe it's in it comes from within, within. and so a woman of a beautiful spirit a woman of wisdom a woman who is um, kind-hearted compassionate will always come out as beautiful you know as i said before we are different colors sizes shapes and everything like that but within every woman there is an inner beauty mm. that we must release mm. by means of what we do, what we say, and how we apply ourselves to things. Wow. That's and you right. mentioned wisdom there. You said yes. a, wo a woman of wisdom. And that's, that's right. one thing that baffles people all the time mm -hmm. when you talk about wisdom. A mm -hmm. lot of people, you know, um, you know, anytime you talk about wisdom, you think about an, an old man or no, an old woman no, no, or a gray-haired no, man no, or a gray-haired, no. you know. But yeah. we're talking about beauty mm -hmm. from... From you know, from 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 a teenager, yeah. from an you know adolescent, mm -hmm. from a child, yes. woman. So when you talk about beauty, what do you wisdom, mean, yeah. really? Sorry, wisdom. Okay, wisdom is the application of knowledge. Okay, you know, you may know something, but then not necessarily know what to do with it at what time. Mm. But wisdom speaks in the sense that wisdom teaches us what to do with the knowledge we have, right. or whatever we have. Yeah. So that's. Um, the application is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say um, you were a banker, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you felt the gift within you yeah. to go into beauty and then it's progressed to coaching. Yes. See, it is a knowledge that you have within you, but you are applying it mm. right. Okay. Right. So wisdom is manifesting. Right. You know? Right. Yes. So wisdom is application of knowledge. The Bible mm. says by wisdom a house is built. Mm. You know, not by money, it's by wisdom. By wisdom. Because somebody can give you a million dollars and if you don't apply wisdom to its use, it will you be just, wasted. Yes, yes. So, so, so wisdom true. is application of knowledge. Yes, yes. Yes, and I, I ask that because I know that that's what you're going to be talking about at the conference this yes, year. Right. I know. I, I think it's wise it's, women rising up. Wise women rising mm -hmm. up. It's mm -hmm. so great yeah. because, like in today's world of social media mm -hmm. and all that, there's so much confusion that's out there. Right. So much. Mm -hmm. So it's great for us to be talking about things like mm -hmm. this on on this great show, the Today's Woman show, on on different shows, on different platforms right. out there, so that if there if there's anybody who's confused, Fused. they can be then put on the yes, right path. Yes. So women are confused, you know, yes, they, yeah. a lot of women are defining um, themselves according to their body shape, according to their hair, according to what they can wear, what they can buy, what purse they hold and all that. But that is not it. Mm. You know, you shouldn't define yourself by material things. Mm. Your definition of yourself should be the character within you, mm. you know, and what you are doing with the life that God has giving, given yeah. to you. Yeah. you know, but it's so sad these days, and that's why a lot of young women are under peer pressure, and even with older women are under mm. pressure, mm. you know, to kind of match up to other women in this or that or that. And most of it, because it's not really you, it ends up in emotional turmoil and mm. destruction. You know, decisions that will not help you in the future. But I believe that if every woman would see that, you know, I have gifts in me, I have abilities, I have talents within me, even if it's just one, pick on it and let that be that which brings you out. Right. Right, right. that which, you know, brings you out. And don't define yourself by, you know, the physical things you see around you. I love that. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't look good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You should look I like good. that. You should look always good on as point. Well. Yes, you uh -huh. should be. Oh, you heard that. Uh -huh. You heard that from a woman of God. Yeah. So yes, you know the wisdom should be within you. You should have confidence within mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Know who you are. Know your self worth. Know your values and all that. But you must look good as well. That's right. Like you know me. Those who follow me, I always say your image is your brand. That's right. And what is your brand? Mm -hmm. So whether you're a child of God, mm -hmm. whether you're a pastor, whether mm -hmm. you're a woman of God, whether you're a banker, mm -hmm. you should carry yourself well in yes. a, in a, in a a respectable way that is yeah. really important even for the woman in the market mm -hmm. you know because people look at you 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 an image consultant you mm. know and 
they, they give to you according to what they see. Yes. The Bible yeah. says that man looks on the outward, but God looks in the inward. Mm -hmm. We often concentrate on God looks into the inner, but man is still looking. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We're People's, very judgmental with right. what we see. That's right. So we must yes. always put ourselves together. So that's together. no excuse. It doesn't matter what it is. Remember the time when I, I had crutches? Yes. It was a time because of the hip problem. I carried crutches yes. for a long time. Yeah. But I decided that I wouldn't let carrying crutches define me mm. who I was mm. I would go through with it yeah. and yes yeah and God has done so it so whatever it is whether it's a disability um, a scar or maybe a malformation that you have from birth or from an accident don't let that define yeah. you because there's more to you than what people see on the outside Apostle thank you so much for coming on the Today's Woman show today um, you know I've been so inspired I have reheard what mm. you keep saying all the time, and it's like just ringing in my spirit. What I really, really love, mm. I love the fact that you've talked about the inner beauty of That's a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. You talked about the values and the mm. worth of a woman, mm -hmm. but you also said that a woman should also carry herself well. Definitely. A lot of the time, sometimes I'm invited to speak right. um, on, on image, on branding, and a lot of churches invite mm. me to come and speak, and mm. there's always a question of how a Christian woman should, should look. look like. You know, and a Christian woman should look beautiful and glorious as well because, you know, it's, it's on to God, you know. So yeah. I love the fact that you also pressed yeah. upon that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. You and so God much, bless Renee. you so much. It's been and a joy. all the best with the Wise Women Rising Up Conference. Thank I you. I know it's going to be amazing. Ladies, you have to l listen out for it. It will be everywhere. You have to be there. It's going to be amazing. Stay blessed. Thank we'll you. Be right back. Thank you. Statistics from the Ghana Statistical Service show that there are about 6 million girls and women between the ages of 14 to 54. Out of this, 50% of them either do not experience menstruation at all or do not have access to sanitary materials with some using other forms of sanitary materials like the menstrual cup. If one of these persons use two parts each day, that means that we are going to have one person using 10 parts each month, making 120 every year. If we have 3 million of these girls or women using sanitary parts, it means we are going to have 360 million parts used annually. But the question is, where are these parts disposed of? I, I normally put it in the water crystal, there's something that doesn't go. When it doesn't go, what do you do? I just remove it and I put it in the dustbin. I used Tiro to wrap it first, then I used polythene bag again to wrap it again, then I just dispose it to the rubbish dump. You will take one part, then you will fold it, then you will put it in the takeaway rub bag and trust it in the dustbin. Well, one way of effectively dealing with sanitary um, products like this would be incineration, but this would have to be done at very, very high temperatures around 800 degrees Celsius. But unfortunately, we do not have those facilities available. So. What happens now is that for safe disposal, it, it goes to the final disposal site. That's the landfills. Mm -hmm. 
Once they end up in the soil, what's going to happen is that they are going to, the chemical is going to bind with the microflora of the soil and prevent decomposition. So they are going to be in the, in the ground for a very long time. The water can wash this to the sea. Remember, fishes are going to feed on it. Okay? And it's going to affect the life of the fishes as well as also serve as a, a danger to those of us who, who, who feed on the fishes as well. Even if to decompose it takes only three months to decompose, meanwhile the other ones will take more than 500 years to decompose and that's already environmental hazard. So we came out with uh, ours which is easy to dispose because in rural areas you can throw it in the latrine, you can just dig the soil and bury it in, in three months you are good to go in the environment. And beside that also, the extraction of the fiber, the waste extraction of the fiber is already an organic manure already. You turn that to organic manure, which is already good for the soil fertility and for the community at large. After today's episode, I'm sure you can say to yourself, I am today's woman, I am a beautiful woman, and I am a wise woman. It's been so, so amazing. It's been inspirational. And I know your life has been changed. You have to believe it. Believe it because you are. Thank you so much to all my sponsors. You make this possible. Without you, we can't have this show. Thank you so much to Move and Pick Ambassador Hotel for this set. Many thanks to GTP and also to Yaz. And thank you for watching. Don't miss it next week, 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. Always tune in because you definitely will be blessed. God bless.